Hi again, everyone. This is Lady T Speaks with Lady T Speaks TV, where we believe that relationships are worth saving. So this is the um, video that I was talking to you about in the intro. Um, I was on Psychology Today and I saw a really interesting article that I want to share with you. So I'm going to be reading the article to you all and um, give me your thoughts and um, tell me where you think you uh, find difficulty in your relationship and how you can um, change that. So this uh, is 10 tips for solving relationship conflicts. And I'm only going to go through maybe one or two suggestions that they make. And then I want to dissect that. I want to just kind of go through it uh, with you all. Uh, my lighting is not the greatest. I'm still working on that, but I didn't want to um, hinder me starting to talk with you all about relationships, relationships, relationships. So let me just read this to you. And I'm going to be turning this way, but you'll get my attention in just a little bit. So as anyone who has been in a romantic relationship knows, disagreements and fights are inevitable. When two people spend a lot of time together with their lives intertwined, they are bound to disagree from time to time. These disagreements can be big or small, ranging from what to eat for dinner or failing to complete a chore to arguments about whether the couple should move for one partner's career or deciding on children's religious upbringing. The mere fact that you fight with your partner isn't a sign that there is trouble in your relationship. In fact, when, handedly, when handled properly, fighting can improve your relationship. If you never fight and never talk about your problems, you will never solve them. By dealing with conflicts constructively, you can gain a better understanding of your partner and arrive at a, as a solution that works for both of you. On the other hand, it is also possible for conflicts to escalate and create ill will without resolving anything. How can you improve the odds of successful resolution to the conflicts in your relationship? Here are 10 um, research back tips. So what the author is saying that there are 10 researched tips that they found out that are very useful to resolve conflict. Now, this is for anybody. And I thought they were really good. That's why I'm sharing them with you all because I thought that these would be a really good place to start. All right, so the first one, it talks about be direct. Sometimes people don't just come out and plainly state what is bothering them and instead choose more indirect ways of expressing their displeasure. One partner may speak to the other in a way that is condescending and implies underlying hostility. Other times, partners may mope and pout without really addressing an issue. Partners may also simply avoid discussing a problem by quickly switching topics when the issue comes up or by being evasive. Such indirect ways of expressing anger are not constructive because they don't give the person who is the target of the behaviors a clear idea of how to respond. They know their partner is irritated, but the lack of directness leaves them without guidance about what they can do to solve the problem. I wanna stop right there for a minute. So you're in an argument. Now I'm talking about a relationship that's been, you know, you've been in it for a minute and um, you know how to use words that will not be evasive and will not be harmful, but your partner does not. So of course, either, and a lot of people do this. Um, when we were, I was in um, psychology studying for my bachelor's, we talked about, um, there's a theory, it's called fight or flight. And so with this, um, people tend to not want to have conflict. So what they do is they'll evade it, um, they'll deflect, they'll, you know, uh, walk away. Um, everybody has what I call coping mechanisms. Um, some are correct and some are incorrect. 
And um, it has been my experience, especially with couples, that when they're in an argument, they don't fight fair. And so this is big and it, be, it can become a sore spot um, because what happens is if you continue to talk about a person in a negative manner, um, it causes them to be defensive and you don't want to be defensive in a loving relationship. Uh, and a lot of times people don't know how to fight fair. Um, and so we'll talk about that, you know, about how you need to fight fair. You know, what words you should say opposed to the words that you should never say to somebody that you love and care about. Now, if you have anger issues, that's something entirely different. It's personal, it's internal, and you need to work that through. Therapy does work if you work it. But if you're just in a, uh, you know, again, you could be having an argument, as the article said, about how to raise your children up in a religious fashion or about dinner. You know, the funny thing, and I, and I know some of you ladies and some of you men will know this because it has happened to you before. When you're going out to eat and you don't know what you want and you ask your partner, what do you want to eat? And your partner says, whatever you want to eat. And then you say again, no, I'm not sure what I want, but what do you want? And they turn right back around and say, well, whatever you want. Okay, somebody need to make a choice. Somebody need to make a decision. It doesn't make sense if I'm hungry that you telling me you don't know what you want to eat either. If you make a choice and I agree with it, then I'm going to say, okay, if not, we'll renegotiate. But this happens a lot of times in couples relationships something as minute as deciding what you're going to eat and where you're going to go it can escalate into something really ugly because the person can say something like this for an example you don't never know where you want to go and eat and then they start getting upset then the other person say yes i do because you keep saying I, never never is a word that you really shouldn't say to your partner ever because it implies that they always do the same thing all the time when in fact we don't. You know, sometimes we differ. Sometimes we are similar, but nobody does the same thing all the time. So that's a big no-no when you're talking in relationships. And I know this is a little lengthy, but I just wanted to share that apart about being direct. You got to tell your partner what you want. Be specific. Not a roundabout way, but be specific. Um, honey, whatever you call them, boo, whatever you call them or by their name, uh, you know, I am feeling this kind of way because, you know, you can't, you, you seemingly are not able at this time to make a decision. And we really need to make a choice on where we're going to eat. Now, that might work sometimes. It may not work all the time, but it is a tool to use. Again, do not be evasive, meaning you, you know, brushing them off because that's pretty much what it means or trying to avoid the issue, whatever it might be. Um, but always think about how you want to be treated in a relationship. It works. If you don't want to be treated badly by someone, then don't you treat them badly. Again, you're going to have arguments Arguments are healthy if they're constructive, not if they're abusive and not if you are, are will, you're wanting to hurt that person because you feel a certain way. Now, I'm going to come back and we'll talk some more about this. But these are, like I said, these are some conflict resolution things that you can do in your relationship. So I'll come back and we'll talk some more about it. That was number one. Be direct. All right, everyone. This is Lady T Speaks with Lady T Speaks TV, where we talk about relationships, relationships, relationships. As I often say, make your day great, live your life on purpose. See y'all.